in our game, you're going to get careful, which means you're like aiming the gun. And if we're not looking at the target correctly, we're not going to move with the target correctly. And you're going to make just the small hiccup, the smallest problem at the end is going to cause you to miss. Shooting a shotgun is about shooting with visual discipline. It's about looking at the target correctly. It sounds so basic, but how we look at the target is, is critical. And the human eye wasn't designed to stare at a target from the machine all the way to the ground. You can't look hard at a moving object like that. So a lot of times I will say, see it late. Do not let my eye leave that target as I'm pulling the trigger. I want to see it late and see it break. And I want to see the pellets hit the target and the target come apart. In real competitive sporting clays, there's not more than 10 hundred straights shot in the country in any given year. If it was easy, everyone would do it. I want to win them all. I want to be the first lady to win a major. I want to be the first lady, you know, to win a world championship. I want to pave the way for all of the girls coming to think that they can do it. I think that's why I love competing so much. No matter how long I've been doing this, I still get nervous. I'm definitely nervous. My heart's pounding. I'm breathing heavy. But I love that feeling. I wish I could bottle it up because I'm addicted to that nervousness. Hi, I'm Zach Keenbaum. I'm a professional sporting clay shooter and coach for Team Winchester and Team Beretta. I got started shooting with my dad. He was a pretty avid hunter. And as a young, young child, we hunted a lot. By the time I was in seventh grade, so 11 or 12 years old, he discovered sporting clays. Pretty much from the beginning, he started taking me along. I think the second round I ever shot was a tournament, and we started shooting tournaments immediately. I learned from my dad patience in the actual process of shooting. He would shoot kind of slow. I tend to shoot a little slower than other top shooters. Just a calmness. He was a very calm person. He never got too excited. He was a retired California Highway Patrolman, so he was a police officer. So I think he knew how to handle different stressful situations. I picked up a lot of that from him, I believe. Five was about the max that you could reliably break one. Now this is within that, but it's not moving. It's also the centrifugal force. I mean, when they're really spinning, you can crack them and they'll break themselves apart. But if they're slow like that, and they're not spinning very fast, you have to hit them even harder. I was winning, or in the running to win, pretty much immediately. And I went to that first national championship that year and I was on the podium. I believe I podium this next year as well but I was always competitive and pretty much a threat to win my given class from the very beginning. At some point, one of my best friends from California, he made the comment to me, he says, your life should read like a book. There should be chapters. Growing up, I was shooting so much with my family that I always thought I would do something in the shooting industry. I wasn't married, didn't have any kids. I was in my late 20s shooting as well as anyone in the country with a real job, I eventually just decided if I'm gonna do it, I gotta do it now. I don't have anything holding me back. So I, I quit my job in Salinas, which is in kind of the central coast of California. And I moved down to Los Angeles. Probably the busiest gun club in America at the time was a club called Triple B Clays. There's not a better place in America to go literally teach 40 plus hours a week to beginners all the way through really good shooters. So that's what I did for, for six or seven years. And my shooting also kind of took off at that point because I was really just focused on shooting and coaching. Part of the steps, part of the chapters definitely helped me along in the process. It's been a while since we shot the Browning Briley. Yeah, I haven't shot the Browning Briley in three or four years. I think I used to get more nervous. Right. I've been doing this for over 30 years. 
I always put this pressure on myself. Very fine line between not caring to shoot well. Yeah. And caring enough to shoot well. If that makes any sense. You did grab that, right, the right one, right? Yeah. Okay, on the floor? Yeah. You mean you don't want to shoot today with your A300? I would if I had to. I know. I know. <laughs> Desi and I met at San Antonio with the Nationals. She's younger than me. And we would kind of meet up at shoots, per se, and we would, we would just kind of conversate or maybe shoot together. Our friendship grew, and it really was just a friendship. The more we started working together and the more we started shooting together, um, we realized how much we enjoyed spending time with each other. One thing led to another. We were dating basically, I think, a year and a half later. <laughs> We went through more experiences together. We got to go to all the places that we always wanted to go, and we got to do it together. And when we would go to tournaments, we got to, you know, see cool monuments and meet new people and make new friends together and go fishing, and, and that hasn't changed. From the day that we met to now, we still really enjoy that, and we still enjoy doing that together. Some days you just kind of got to take what you can take and call it a day, especially in a three-day tournament. It's easy for someone to get hot one day, but when you have to be consistent or good over a three-day stretch, it poses much more of a challenge. I'm Desiree Edmonds, and I'm a professional sporting clay shooter and instructor for Team Winchester and Team Breda. I love everything about this sport. I love the challenge. I love the people, I love the travel, I love the lessons that it teaches me, I love the experiences, I love being outdoors, I love everything about shooting sporting clays. She's a competitor, she's probably a more tenacious competitor than I am. When she's really on and she doesn't come out on top, she is, I've never seen someone so angry. The first time I remember seeing Desi was Nationals 2019. And so I got to see them all shoot off, both Zach and Desi. And I thought that was really cool. And just seeing another girl up there shooting is really inspiring. I actually started shooting when I was about 13 or 14 in Alaska, where I was born and raised. And interestingly, no one in my family shoots. No one in my family has shot a shotgun. My parents, maybe when they were younger, they went hunting a little bit. But it wasn't something that I was involved in or I was around or I even you know, had any experience with. It really was just a hobby at first. And then there was another league that they shot just outside of Anchorage that involved trap and skeet and then some sporting. And we did that once a week. So that was kind of the next step in getting more involved in it. And the more I shot, the more I enjoyed it, the more I started learning more about it. I got a little bit better at it. And that's when I decided to move to California where Zach was living at the time and Zach was teaching. He's taught me a lot over the years, whether it be shooting or, or just kind of how to handle myself in certain situations. He's someone I look up to in shooting and in life. He's a great person, he's a great shot. And uh, one of these days, I'm going to beat him consistently, so you better watch out. But um, until that day, I'm going to try my best to always listen to his advice. I think the biggest thing that Zach specializes in and really my biggest strong point as a competitor is visual discipline. He took my game from, you know, just being a kid that shot a lot to actually refining it and giving me some discipline. Brought my consistency to a whole new level and is really the reason that I'm at the level that I'm at today. I kind of took pride from the fact that up until that point, the only person I'd taken a lesson from was my father. Becoming a coach definitely helped me become a better shooter. Just, just being a student of the game. When you're a really good shooter, sometimes you're so in your own thoughts and how you perceive things. As a coach, you're trying to, to mold someone's experience through their own eyes. So sometimes we forget what the game felt like or looked like when we were that beginner shooter. Zach Kimbaum, he's my sporting clays coach. We go shoot at the same club and I take lessons from him about once a week now. And I've known him pretty much since I've started and I shoot with him a ton. Zach 
pretty much taught me how to shoot, how to shoot birds and bring me out to these tournaments to get more experience and learn how to shoot. Learning from the best is the best you can get. I get a lot of people asking me what, what age to start a, a kid shooting, and it really isn't an age, it's, it's their size. They need to be able to hold the gun up, load the gun, unload the gun themselves but then just the maturity to be safe with it. There's a big diversity in the type of people that shoot sporting clays. You've got young people, older people, doctors, lawyers, architects, contractors, dentists, everything that you can possibly imagine. And a younger person, when they're squatted with maybe people that they don't know, they're kind of forced into social situations that they wouldn't normally be presented with. There's people that want to be world champions, and there's people that could care less about being a world champion yet. They enjoy being out there and, and shooting the targets and, and having fun with it. It's a sport for anybody. You can be a kid or you can be, you know, the legacy concurrent, which is 80 plus, and, and it doesn't discriminate for age. I mean, you can shoot from a wheelchair. If you can hold a shotgun, you can shoot. So it's for everybody. Moms, dads, brothers, sisters, aunts and uncles, the whole crew comes. And everybody can do it together as a family. That's what's great about it. Shooting sports attract the best people. It's fun to break targets. It's fun to compete or just trying to challenge yourself. You know, can I hit this or can I hit it two or three or four times? For young adults or kids, the shooting sports is a great hands-on experience. It gets them off the cell phones. It gets them off the video games. It gets them outside and physically active and socially active. Um, and I think that's something that we need more of in today's world. My definition of success isn't winning all the time. I tell my students and, and myself a lot of times that when I'm gone, I don't think people are gonna think of me with one thing that I want or one shoot. They're gonna look at a body of work. Over three decades of being one of the top shooters in whether it be my age group or just in the country in general, being able to consistently be a factor at the top is something that I truly, truly pride myself on. I've done it for a very long time. But also playing the game the right way. I'm a big proponent of integrity. Helping other people along the way is important to me. I wish I could say that the future of the sport is bigger than the NBA or the MLB, right? The future is very bright for sporting clays and shooting sports in general. More participation, there's more inclusivity, there's more diversity there's more opportunity than there ever has been before. The equipment is better than it ever has been. We're seeing great support from big industry leaders like Winchester and Beretta, especially in the youth shooting. I think when you can cultivate a passion or a love for a sport at a young age, it will reflect later in life. And I hope, again, that, that shooting becomes the normal, and I think it's on its way. Mm -hmm.